Hey, everybody. I want to welcome you to the very first episode of the Cash Flow Positive podcast show with your host, Kenny Bedwell. That is myself. I want to say welcome. This is a big moment for me and, and really for the listeners is why I'm doing this. I really wouldn't be doing it if it weren't for people encouraging me to branch out from my other podcast, STRonomics, that I do with Bill Faith. I'm still going to be doing STRonomics. I think it's a great podcast, great setting. We have a big yin and yang kind of feeling, but the feedback I've really gotten from people is to really do do my own thing and, and do it a little bit differently than STRonomics or some of the other podcasts out there for short-term rentals. So let's start out with how I'm going to be different because I really wanted to create a podcast that just isn't just me talking and teaching specific concepts, but actually helps people take action. Who? It could be people who are looking to buy their first short-term rental or current short-term rental hosts who are looking to expand, maybe improve upon their current properties. But the most important thing is to cash flow on their properties, right? We all want to cash flow. We all want to make money from short-term rentals. How do we do it? So that's what I'm going to be focusing on on all my episodes, but I'm going to be doing it in a unique way. So listen to this. Each episode is going to be a part one and a part two. In part one, I'm going to teach you, and for those who've listened to me before in STRnomics, I lay it down. I'm going to go step, 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 do this, do that. There's not going to be a lot of color to it. There's not going to be a lot of storytelling. That's not who I am. A lot of you know my background being from Citibank, very analytical, into the numbers, into the data. That's how I think, and that's how I teach too. And so it's helpful, but it's not a lot of color. So I'm going to do these part one episodes where it's just content. It's going to be very powerful have the notes ready, be prepared, but I'm going to dive into that in part one. And then in part two, I've decided that I'm actually going to interview people, whether that's to help them out in their current situations or interview people who applied the concepts that I taught in part one. And so you're going to get two episodes a week, part one being like, here's the concept. Part two is here's the concept being applied you know, here's the story and here's someone else's experience that you can take into account. Now, it might be someone else. It could be me, but it's going to be more storytelling, a little more laid back rather than just like, all right, here's the content. Boom, boom, boom. And I've really listened to a lot of my listeners from STRonomics and just the feedback I've gotten in terms of what they like, what they don't like. I'm going to try this out. And I want your help to know if this is actually helpful, like if useful and, and beneficial, or if I should just, you know, do whatever I'm doing, you know, and teaching and, and give it my best shot. You guys let me know. I really appreciate your feedback. I wouldn't be creating this podcast or doing any of this if it weren't for people saying, Kenny, you need to do this. Imposter syndrome is very real. So I appreciate any feedback or thoughts that you you give me in terms of maybe even what I can be better on too. That's it's really appreciative. Okay. And these part one episodes, they're going to be pretty short. They're going to be 15 minutes. I'm not going to go over 15 minutes. So I've got to a lot to unpack. I might talk fast, but it's going to be helpful and you are going to want to take notes. So how fitting is it to talk about cash flow on the first episode, right? That's the name of the podcast, Cash Flow Positive. Let's talk about cash flow, what that means, why you should care about it, maybe why it might be more important than cash on cash return, which is also really talked about a lot in our industry as well. What's the difference between the two? Which one should I really care about? Which one should I focus on when I make acquisitions in this space? Let's dive into it. Okay. So cash flow. Remember, cash flow is just simply your net profit that you get at the end of the year. All right. Now, watch this on YouTube if you want to see some of the presentations and the notes. If you're listening to this and you're like, okay, he's talking about a presentation or he's talking about a slide, you can go to the YouTube channel at STR. I'm going to post it on STR Insights. So at STR Insights, I'll have all the uh, episodes on there and you can watch for the uh, cash flow positive podcast show. So let's talk about cash flow though. So cash flow is the net profit that you make per year, per your property, right? So why is that important to talk about first? It's because goal setting helps us identify where we want to look and where we want to find deals, all right? So understanding how much money you want to make from a property is going to help you find that right property or find your next property. Okay. Or it's going to help you know how your current property is performing. A lot of people come to me after they lose money on current properties and they're like, my money, my property is not making me any money. Well, number one, should it be making any money? 
well, yeah, of course it should be made. Well, how much? And they don't know. And so if you have a property and you're not looking at acquiring another one, you need to know how much money you're currently making and then how much should you be making. Okay. So understanding your cash flow is key towards your success and improving what your overall goal is, which is to make money for a why. Maybe it's to leave your W2 job. Maybe it's to have more freedom with your family or more time or more flexibility, whatever that is. Cash flow is the key to getting and obtaining those things. I hate it. Hate it. I'll use that word hate. That's very strong. I hate it when people tell me, hey, Kenny, I'm going to buy a short term rental and you should really only buy for the long term appreciation because that's really where you make your money. I hate it because although that that's partly true, you do make money from long term appreciation. That's not why we're doing this. That's not why we're investing in short term rentals. That's not why we're dealing with guests day in and day out if you're managing yourself. Okay, you're not using property management. That's not why. We are even in this space. If that is, go buy a long-term rental. Go buy multi-unit assets. Don't buy short-term rentals. Short-term rentals are for those people who want cash flow. And that's why you're listening to this. That's why you're here is to improve your cash flow and to make it better. Now, what I really want to sit on today is, is it more important to focus on cash flow or cash on cash from an acquisition or a current standpoint. We're going to talk a little bit more on acquisition. So just bear with me on that. If you're not looking to acquire new properties, that's okay. This is still going to be helpful for you because I hear cash on cash so much. Oh, what's the cash on cash return? Is it 30%, 20%, 15%, 25%? Like just random numbers are, are just spit out from people. And I ask people why, why is that your cash on cash goal? Which cash on cash is just simply how quickly you get your money back. So if I invest $100,000 into a deal, how quickly do I get that money back? If I get it back in three years, that's a 33% or roughly 30% cash on cash return. But investors, especially in the short-term rental space, who are a little bit newer to this industry, they hear things when people talk about on podcasts or in conferences or their favorite guru on YouTube say, it's got to be 20% or nothing less than that, or it's not a good deal. But what a good deal and what a good cash on cash or even a cash flow number depends on the person. It depends on you. Okay. And so what I want to dive in here is how do you determine what that number is? Okay. So how do we determine what our cash on cash or our cash flow goals are and which one is more important? Because the reality is they're actually, when you look at them, they're actually a little bit inverse of each other. What I mean by that is if I go and purchase a property and I use a 10% down second home loan, which you can do, okay, I'm putting less cash into the deal. But my debt service, meaning how much my monthly payment is to pay back the mortgage, is going to be higher because I'm going to have to pay mortgage insurance. I might have a slightly higher interest rate because the bank considers it a little more risky. Maybe, maybe not, depending on the lender. You know, There's all these other factors involved, but I'll have more debt to pay back. Therefore, my monthly payment will be higher. Therefore, my cash flow will be lower simply because I put less money into the deal. Now, for a lot of investors, that's fine and that's normal. And that seems to be more of a cash on cash play. But as we get more advanced, meaning we buy more properties and we start making more money, we start tilting towards wanting to have more cash flow at the end of the year, meaning like we just want more money because our time has become more valuable. And this is where cash flow comes into play. So meaning that like, if I put more money into a deal, I have less debt I have to pay back. Therefore, I will cash flow, cash flow more money at the end of the year, but I'll get my money back less quickly because I had to put more money up front. Hopefully that makes sense. So understanding cash on cash and cash flow is really, really important to getting started, at least in finding deals, because this helps you know what your goals are. And this will help you know where you should invest because the reality is certain markets don't cash flow as well as other markets. Certain markets have better cash on cash returns than other markets do. Okay, so understanding those differences will definitely help you get your feet planted in the right direction. So let's dive into this a little more. Like I said, part of this is going to be a presentation format. So I'm going to share my screen, but I'm going to explain it for podcast listeners, obviously, because this is what the show does. So let's take a look at this. So I've got two goals here. I've got cash on cash and I have cash flow. Which one should I care about when I go to purchase a property? All right. So cash on cash, we know is how quickly I get my money back. And you'll see underneath here, I kind of have a 
a dollar amount, which is $500,000. It's under both. But you'll see if your purchase price is less than $500,000, if that's your budget to purchase a property, your purchasing power is $500,000, then you're most likely, this is my rule of thumb, most likely more focused on getting your money back quickly. That's your cash on cash, meaning like, I want to buy this property, get my money back quickly and scale. So when we want to scale quickly and buy more assets, we're more focused on getting our money back, i.e. cash on cash. Whereas if we're buying bigger assets, we want them to simply just make us more money, which is cash flow. So knowing the difference between the two where you sit can be as simple as understanding this quick rule of thumb of, hey, is my budget above or below $500,000, okay? So let's go back. I want to focus briefly on cash flow, okay? So how do I determine my cash flow goal? So let's say my budget is above $500,000. How do I determine my cash flow goal? So there's two ways to do this, okay? Number one, most people will not fall in the first bucket. So I'm going to warn you on this first one. There's two buckets or two ways. So the first way, most people won't, but some people do. The first way is to look at your time, money, value. So what is time, money, value? If you work a job or a cert, like whatever you do to make money right now, you have an hourly rate, okay? Even if you're not paid hourly, if you're W-2, you still have an hourly rate and you can calculate this, okay? On average, per year, per month, you will spend eight hours a month per short-term rental managing it. If you're managing a property, eight hours per month. So let's say I have my hourly rate for whatever job I have is I make a hundred bucks an hour on average. So I would on average, if I spend eight, eight hours a month per property. So on average, I'm going to spend $800 worth of my time. Okay. So that means that at the end of the year, so if I say 800 times 12 months, that's $9,600. So that means that my Airbnb or my short-term rental, I'm going to call it short-term rental because it's not truly just an Airbnb. My short-term rental better be generating at least $9,600 in cash flow for it to be worth my time. All right. $9,600 really isn't that much. Let's be honest. Okay. So that's why I like the time, money, value thing. If your hourly rate, some people listening, your hourly rate's much higher than that. Say it's $500. Okay. $500 times eight gives me $4,000 a month. 4,000 times 12 gives me $48,000 a month. So $48,000, that means a property has to be generating $48,000 a year for it to be worth your time. Medical professionals, I know there's a lot listening to this. I help these clients out all the time. They come to me and they're like, I want to buy a property and maybe it's 600,000 is my budget. What should I be shooting for? What, what is the market return? I go, well, what are your goals? And they don't know. So I ask, what's your time, money, value? And if it's higher, say it's 500, 400, 500, their time, money, value sets the goal, the cash flow goal, meaning that it's not worth their time if that property is not generating $48,000 or more, if they have a $500 an hour wage or whatever. So that's one way to do it. Now, most of us don't fall in that bucket, like I said, in that way. It's the second way. And I call it the minimum happiness score. So what I mean by that, and this is where it gets a little subjective, but you have to think about this. Meaning if you go out and buy, let's say a $750,000 home, short-term rental, you go buy a $750,000 short-term rental, what's the minimum that property needs to make to be worth it to you? Okay. I'll really think about that for a second. What's the minimum? I'm going to invest all this money, this time, this effort. I got to get the property ready. I got to list it. I got to deal with gas. I'm going to do all these different things. What's it worth it to me at minimum? And I'll, I'll do a little bit of guessing game with people when I break this down with them. I'll say, okay. And they're like, well, I don't know. And I'm like, well, what about $30,000? $30,000 a year off this property. Yeah, that sounds pretty good. Okay, well, what about 20? Well, nah, I, I kind of wanted to make more than that. There it is. We have found a minimum. Okay, well, what about 25? Yeah, yeah, I, I would be okay with that. Well, 23? No, no, no. So 25 is your minimum then. That's your minimum happiness score. And that's your cash flow goal. Minimum cash flow goal. Of course, we want the properties to make as much as possible, but your minimum cash flow or your minimum happiness score is going to help you know where to set that minimum cash flow goal at, okay? So like I said, it is a little subjective, but it helps you determine really what you should be going for and what's going to make sense for you. Because the reality is as you learn, especially as you apply the techniques that I'm going to teach you throughout this podcast, you're going to find that the market will help show you what reality in terms of what you can actually get for your cash flow is. Now, 
if it's not worth your time, meaning you're, you're not finding any deals that are minimally cash flowing, say $25,000 in this example, then it might not be a good time to purchase, or you might need to invest in other things. But you need to stay true to your goals. You need to stay true to your cash flow goals. Now, I'm going to tell you right now that yes, you can cash flow 25K in short terminals. It is very possible. I have a short terminal myself. I bought last year, or I guess a year and a half now. Uh, at the height of the market, height of the interest rates, it's it's over 7% for the interest rate. But this property is cash flowing $51,000 and I bought it for $350,000. So like, if I can do it, you can definitely do it too. And I'm going to share all my secrets and formulas and all this fun stuff. Okay, that is how you determine your cash flow goals. And that's really what we need to start with. And if you currently own a property, you need to rethink that whole process too. How you determine your cash flow goal. And if you already have it, great. You're prepared for this podcast series. I'm super excited. Stay tuned, guys. I'm going to wrap up here. I went two minutes over on this one, but I had to give a little bit of an introduction because this was the first episode and it was really exciting to do this and launch this. As always, thank you so much for listening. Please leave me a review. I love reviews, but more importantly, I appreciate the feedback. That's really what I want is your feedback. And if you think this is valuable for someone else, please share this episode and or this podcast with other people. I love to help and help other people achieve their goals. My name is Kenny Bedwell, and I will see you on the next episode of Cashflow Positive.